you're a miracle. Your ancestors survived, their ancestors survived, and you're here now. Explore that journey. This lesson explores how to perform ancestry research for the junior English classes. You'll need to go to siprep.org slash library for a project page. Choose class projects. From there, scroll down to English and choose a junior ancestry project. This project asks you to find a journey your ancestors took. To get started, you'll need to gather some resources. You'll need your SFPL barcode and PIN, and you will need to ask your family some questions about an ancestor, preferably a grandparent um, or several grandparents. The more grandparents that you collect information about, the easier it will be. On the project page, you'll see a form it guides you through that same information collection, your SFPL barcode and PIN, and information about your ancestors. So we're going to look at Ancestry, um, which is a database, and we use the SFPL Ancestry Library Edition. You can get there from sfpl.org, or you can follow the link on the project page. Right there in step two, there's the link use your barcode and PIN to sign in. Ancestry provides many different types of information. Think about the sources that I'm listing here, the resources that I'm listing here, and what they can tell you about the journey your ancestors have taken. I'll explore one of my ancestors that I don't know very much about. So I click begin searching. I'm going to think about my mom's father, my grandfather. I know about a lot about my dad's side, not so much about my mom's side and especially not her father's side. His name was Leroy Malco. Some people spell Leroy as one word too, so I'm going to choose exact and similar. And I know he lived in Whittier for a long time, Whittier, California. So I choose that. That really helps me narrow down which Leroy Malco I'm looking at. I know he was born around 1915. Oop, here are the results. That's definitely him. That was my grandmother. She had a very distinctive name. And I can see that death in 1975 in Whittier. Listed on this page, are a bunch of different documents, government documents, that um, relate to him. So there's census data, military, his draft cards. Um, someone's created a family tree that we'll explore a little bit later. Um, but here are actual links to the government documents. So census, his draft card. Here I see his name, his middle name is Edward. That might help me as I do further research. Uh, Howard Leroy Malco, that's not my grandfather, so I can ignore that. Let me click on one of these census reports. Let's look at 1930 in New York. So here's um, the information that's printed on there. Easier to read than the handwriting of the actual census sheet that we'll look at. Here it is. All that written by hand. There's the Malco family, all of his siblings. The professions of the adults, the ages of everyone in the household, and their address. So I could see right where that family was in 1930. Here's 1920 when he was three years old. Still in Pendleton, or already in Pendleton, New York. Here's his dad. I just clicked on his father's same page. Information is the same, it just tells me it's just focused on his father now. Charles J. Malco. Okay, there's a name I need to keep track of. Charles J. Malco. The further I dig into these people, 
I start finding a bunch of information about their, their ancestors. So I want to write this down. I know he was in Pendleton. I know his, grand, his father was Charles J. Malco. Let me explore this family tree that some distant relative of mine put together. Family tree works like a timeline on Ancestry and the dates are linked to those types of documents that we were looking at on the previous page. Here we see important dates in my grandfather's life, marriage and birth. We see connections to relatives and once again, all those pieces of government data. I can click on life story and it has a summary and notice his birth there in upstate New York and his death in California. So there's some movement that happens in his life. There's a journey between 1930 and 1935 from Pendleton, New York to Los Angeles. What caused it? I need to start exploring that idea. If that's the journey I want to explore, what happened to him, to the nation in those five years to, to cause him to, to move? I can also look at his ancestors. So let me click on his father there, Charles J. And we see his important dates in the timeline and government documents. Registration cards, census data that we know about. Looks like he was born in the United States. Here's his dad, William Malco. He was born in Germany. And then as you scroll down, Germany, Germany, departure, ooh, arrival, 1872, moving from Germany to New York. That's important, there's a journey. That's something I would wanna explore. What caused William Malko, my grandfather's grandfather, to move from Germany to, to the United States? Looks like he was in Michigan, then in Pennsylvania, well, oh, let's see, Pennsylvania, oh, that, this is so cool. This is a picture of the passenger list, everybody that was on the boat with him, so amazing. So now I've got some data. I've been taking notes. I wanna explore that William Malco and find the story. How did he get here? So I'm going to start with Library of Congress. Library of Congress has actually put together a page about um, immigration and relocation and it's linked up on the project page. So it talks about the trends in immigration and relocation in, in the United States history and you can scroll down and look at particular ethnic groups. Of course uh, he came from Germany so I'm going to choose German and if I scan through here I find out some of the trends that lead some, led some groups to come to the United States. Especially I'm focusing on that middle of the 19th century. What would lead a German person here? I can also look at migrations within the United States. This would be one if I wanted to explore my grandfather's journey from New York to California. Click on that on the project page. And here we look at movement between states. It's interactive, it's pretty interesting. It also has some trends by different ethnic groups and movements. What caused them, when they happened, and some great maps that go along with them. Right at this point, I've collected some history. I've collected some um, actual data about my family. I need to know more. I really need to get to the story. So at this point, I should probably perform an interview. I want to know more about their professions, politics, and religion to figure out how they fit into the American story of migration. People you ask, you will need to cite. Um, we've got some really good resources here for creating questions. If you're in the dig digger, digging deeper step on um, the project page, choose the suggested questions 
And once you get past the biographical questions, there's some really good ideas to dig into those journey stories. I would explore these before I set out to interview any family members. Remember, you're gonna to wanna to take notes. You can also check out audio recording equipment from the library if it would help you to audio record. We have some really good tools. And then you will need to cite your interviews. We recommend using zbib.org. On ZBib, choose Manual Entry, uh, drop down to Interview, and then you'll fill out the interview with, the date you inter perform that interview, and ZBib will save the works cited entry for you. Remember, you can live chat us with questions right on the project page anytime during library hours. According to the last census, 39 million 538,223 people live in California. That's a lot of stories. We can't wait to hear yours.